All right, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of our Madden 25 Connected Franchise Owner Mode Fantasy Draft Ralph Wilson Buffalo Bills YouTube Series. Today is episode number 91. It is Cereal Monday. I am sitting here just finishing up a wonderful bowl of chocolatey goodness um, that my mother would not have let me eat when I was a child. Uh, however, I can eat it now because I am, in fact, a grown man. Um, Though I do play video games on the internet with Ciro. But that is beside the point. We are coming off a huge win at home that saw us take on division rival New York Jets and destroy them by a score of 27 to 10. A convincing win. And uh, I would like nothing more than to quickly get through everything today so we can see exactly where we're going to stand um, with the AFC conference as time goes on. First things first, Gino Castro. Uh, his development rating is what we've been saving his points up for. Um, given that he is so young, uh, his development is slow, and it's going to cost us those 25,000 points to upgrade that. We do not have the points yet, 23,000. Uh, though we might have it after we're done practice today. Um, so if we practice and we can come back to Gino Castro, we can upgrade that. Eric Baldwin, uh, I don't know if we've been saving up. I think he might just have a disgusting amount of points because... He's been so good uh, this season. And yeah, he's, uh, he's already quick. So we have 23,000 points to play with, with Eric Baldwin, which is pretty phenomenal stuff. Um, Eric Baldwin, uh, we would like to get his awareness up. Um, it's not bad being a rookie and a young rookie at that. It's already 80. Uh, I'd like to get it to 82 is even enough, I think. Just a, just a short upgrade. Um, his pass blocking. Uh, let's go or his run blocking. Let's go ahead and get that up just a little bit to 72. I think would be good enough. Just a little bit of an upgrade. His catching itself. Let's go ahead and get that up to 88. It's at 85 right now. I'd like him to eventually have 90 catching. I don't want to spend all his points there today though because catching is an expensive upgrade. So he's up to 88 there. Still just under 10,000 points to play with. And for him, there's a couple big ones that we need to work on. First one here is route running. Because his route running is a bit stinky. That's okay. Uh, we can get it up to about 75 today. Uh, the second one is going to be his release. A release for tight end is very important because as much as Eric Baldwin has the advantage of being huge, which he is, um, we are going to be able to uh, upgrade his, his release, which means that he's going to have an easier time getting off of the line. So when he's lined up in the tight end spot, and somebody, you know, linebacker wants to come and give him the business, um, he'll have an easier time throwing that man off and, and getting up to uh, uh, where we need him uh, in the field of play. Uh, I'd like to see his release get up to 75. Uh, nope, oops, I just upgraded his toughness. That's okay, his toughness isn't very good either. Uh, I'd like to see his catching and traffic get a little better, so that is unfortunately all we can afford for today. But his route running, his release starting to get better, um, his awareness up a bit, his catching starting to become elite, catching in traffic very good, run blocking starting to become very good. And aside from that, like the dude's just got so much skill in so many different places. Drops open pass trait, yes. We'll need to purchase that. Um, to decrease your chances of opponent dropping. Oh, I think he, he, do, he does not drop passes. I think that's what he is. We purchased that. Um, his change predictability clutch trait. So there's a couple things we need to get eventually, but his trucking is so good. Acceleration, spectacular catch. I mean, the guy, the speed, the injury. He's just the whole package. This is why he's going to be the AFC Offensive Rookie of the Season. Uh, moving on from him, though, in the tight end category, we have Jeff Cumberland. Jeff Cumberland just re-upped with us until the age of 30. Uh, for him, we've worked a lot on his running, uh, uh, run blocking. His run blocking, 80. Very good. I don't feel the need to touch that at all. Um, for him, I mostly want to work on his catching uh, in traffic ability. His catching in traffic isn't great. 76, um, though he doesn't get a lot of balls thrown his way, I'd like to see him have the ability to catch in traffic a little better. Um, then after that, just his catching, straight up catching. I'd be happy to get that up a bit. Um, his pass blocking, maybe get that up a bit too. Catching is already 88. That's pretty darn good. That's like an expensive upgrade. With only 1,000 points left, I think we'll just hold on to the 1,000 points. 
and I'll get his toughness up to 75, may as well, because I'm a bit OCD with that kind of stuff. So Jeff Cumberland, our backup tight end of the future, so to speak, uh, a long-term investment, sitting pretty at 80 overall. Eric Baldwin, by the way, now 90 overall as a rookie at the age of 21. Pretty phenomenal stuff. Um, Niles Paul, let's start off, let's get his oh, uh, run, route running uh, up to a respectable mark. And by respectable, I don't mean actually good, just better than awful, which is where it's been uh, for right now. So his route running, let's get it up to about a 65. Niles Paul gets into the game very little, uh, but as we discovered this week with Basman Hooker's injury, injuries can strike at the worst times. And when those injuries happen, we need players who can come in and do a nice job. Excuse me. So we'll get his, his running run blocking up a bit. His awareness is up a bit. His route running's up a lot today, which is nice. His awareness, get it up to 77. Nice. Feeling good about Niles Paul. I think Niles Paul's a free agent, but I'd like to have him back for next season again. 77, still young, just 25 years of age. Not somebody who's ever going to be a star, but somebody who can, I think, be a very valuable asset um, as a backup uh, Michael Roos, as always, we go to his run blocking, get that up to 89. Michael Roos, one of the best pass blockers in the business. Uh, pass blocking is 97. Pretty dominant. Good acceleration, everything you want in a tackle. His injury rating actually isn't very good. I did not know that. His toughness is very good. The awareness is great. His impact blocking isn't phenomenal, but it's not bad. Let's go ahead and get that up one more to 87. Just get his run blocking up. Now, now, for left tackles, you're always more concerned with the pass blocking when you have a right-handed quarterback. So his run blocking is really just a bonus, but it's nice to get that up. Bruce Campbell, meanwhile, we're not going to bother upgrading him as he is a free agent who's not looking at re-signing. Um, if we upgrade him, he'll just want more money, and that's not something we're interested in paying him. Ben Grubbs, left guard, 10,000 points to spend. With Ben Grubbs, it's often been his stamina that we've worked on. And if we do uh, get one more 87, pretty darn good for a, for a guard as big of a man as, as Ben Grubbs is. So Ben Grubbs, satisfied with that. Left guard Danny Watkins will not get upgraded. Same thing. Uh, he's a free agent who's likely not coming back, so no need to do it. Eric Wood up next. Eric Wood, uh, his pass blocking is at 86, not phenomenal. Run blocking at 90, that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and get his consistency up to three. Just two consistency packages. Eric Wood, done. Roberto Garza, the backup center. Also someone we're not going to worry about upgrading. Given that he is likely going to retire after this season, he will not be back as a bill because he is a free agent. Uh, but I assume we'll just retire. If not, he'll, uh, I don't know, we'll, uh, we'll have to <laughs> buy him a gift basket or something. I don't know. Luis Vasquez up next. Luis Vasquez is. He, is do we need to make Luis Vasquez clutch? I don't know. What do, what does clutch mean for a guard? I don't. I don't get it. I think if anything, let's get his impact blocking up one to eighty six, and let's get his stamina up one to eighty six as well. There we go. You can never have enough stamina on the offensive line because if you want to run eight plays in a row, those guys are huffing and puffing. Right guard Brandon Mosley, uh, twenty five years old, big mauler. Has some skills, re-upped with us long-term last year for a really nice, affordable amount of money. Um, we uh, we can. Uh, I'd like to get his run blocking up. Uh, Brandon Mosley, I'm thinking, could be our incumbent left guard. Uh, I shouldn't say incumbent, our, our left guard of the future, so to speak. Ben Grubbs, let's check out his age right here. Grubbs, is, he's only 30, so he's got a lot of time left. But Mosley's with us for the next four years. He's 25 he could very easily shift over the left side of the formation, plug in there, and I think play really nicely. Or at least be a stopgap while we develop someone behind him, but easily someone who can come and do a nice job for us. Meanwhile, Marcus Gilbert, the man, the legend, playing on the other side at the at the right tackle spot. He's got some nice consistency. We've worked on his pass blocking a whole lot. Um, his impact blocking is good. He's just a guy who I love, quite frankly. I think he's a phenomenal right right tackle. For for a guy his size, his acceleration's great, his strength is great, his speed is great. Um, he's developed for us very, very nicely. Um, and, you know, do we make... Sure, let's make our right tackle clutch. <laughs> Marcus Gilbert, more likely to not screw up when the game's on the line. Good, we'll take that for a tackle. 
for a tackle who could who, who's working against some of the best pass rushers in the league. I'll buy that. I'll take that. Johnny Culbreath, meanwhile, the backup uh, who re-upped for a lot of money this offseason, likely going to be trade bait for this offseason. We'll get his pass blocking up to 87, and that's done. Culbreath likely on his way out with us, but that's okay. We'll bring up somebody behind uh, behind Gilbert. Culbreath just never going to beat out Gilbert for that job, as far as I'm concerned. Rob Ninkovich, who's had a very quiet season at his defensive tackle spot, uh, likely not going to be a starter in that spot again. Uh, we'll hit him next week when we're on to the defensive line. Um, but just a little sneak peek there. Likely not going to be back, at least in that role. We'll have to find something for him. Uh, moving on from there, um, I'm trying to think, is there anybody else we desperately need to get to now that we've completed our offensive linemen and our receivers? I'd like to do just a little bit of extra upkeep getting close to the playoffs because I don't want anybody sitting on a huge, huge, huge number of points. We're waiting on Castro. Offensive line's good. Probably next episode we'll do the defense as needed, I guess, um, just as a preparation for the playoffs. Whoever needs it will get the upgrades. Whoever doesn't need it, they can just sit on whatever they have. All right, so we're on to the next thing. We got our, D, we got our tight ends, wide receivers, offensive linemen done, defense coming next time, perfect. Scouting, we've already scouted. We, we have our center picked out. We have our left tackle picked out. We have our corner picked out. We're, 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 pretty, we're set pretty well. I'd like to just keep going with the receivers. It's looking like we're going to have to take two receivers with Doug Baldwin not likely to re-sign and Mario Manningham likely to be traded. Um, I'm trying to think where have we gotten with everybody. With everybody, we, we need to get the catching done. And we left off with Tayshon, or Tayshon Murphy out of Hofstra. 6'4", 221. Love the size. Love the, love the age as well. Just 20 years of age. Catching in traffic is a C. Route running is a C. Awareness is a C. His release is a C. His carrying is a B. I like that. Run blocking is a D. I don't like that as much. Injury, an A. Impact block, a C. Stamina, a B. I don't mind that kid. Not awful. Perry Timbers now. And from here on out, I'd like to just check run blocking ability first and foremost. Is an F. Timbers off the list. Because these are players, if we go over to the left here, these are guys who are like sixth rounders, like guys who are at the bottom of the barrel. And for guys right at the bottom of the barrel, I want to know, can you run block? I want to find a dominant run blocking wide receiver. I want to find the next Heinz Ward. Especially if we're going to be losing Doug Baldwin, I'd like to find a kid who can run block. Kylian Jewett from Georgia State. Is that you? Are you that run blocker? No, you're not. Joseph Hepburn, 6'1", 205. Are you that run-blocking cornerback? Oh, no, I passed it. I apologize. Run-blocking is a D. No, you're not. Addison Mead, 6'2", 204, Northwestern. Are you that run-blocker? No, you're not. Junior Anunda, 6'3", 220. Though your picture makes you look 6'6", 320. D, no, you're gone. Jamarcus Cunningham, a seventh rounder, cuts town. That sounds like the name of a fake ghetto town in a bad movie, not a university. But apparently it is a university or a college. Run blocking F, get out of my face. 6'4, 210, Juan Blissett out of Simon Fraser. Are you a run blocker? Eh, kinda. It's a C. It's not very good though. About the same as everyone else got. Run blocking, Kiri McAllister. No, you're not you. Out of St. John's. Nope. 6'2", 222, Tavares Martin, the last guy slated to go in this draft in terms of wide receivers. Are you that run blocker? No, you're not. D. How many more do we got? We got five more guys. You know what? At 50,000 or 50 points a pop, I think it's worth checking out all these guys. Curtis Foxwell. D. No, it's not you. Abraham Clofer, 6'2", 216, out of Fort Hayes State. Are you that run-blocking wide receiver? No, you're not. That's a D, and that sucks. Quan Bird up next, 6'4", 210. Run-blocking? Nope, it's a D. It's garbage. Jamar Harlow, 6'1", 212 out of Missouri. Is it you? Run-blocking? C. Garbage. Get away. Dosha Landry, 6'3", 206. Is it you? Last wide receiver? It's a D. No, get out of my face. So we spend about... 500 points checking out the last 10 wide receivers slated to go none of them have that run blocking ability we're looking for and that leads us to right here 
the, the, the tight ends scheduled to go at the end of the draft. Why? Because these are guys who I think could potentially play in the slot. You know, Jimmy Graham plays in the slot for the, for the uh, New Orleans Saints like 95% of the time. Okay, that's an exaggeration, but he plays there most of the time. If we can find a kid, like a tight end, like this kid, 6'7", 247, Jesus Vichioso out of Eastern Kentucky. If he can run block and his speed isn't awful, you know, if we have a guy who, who's speed, you know, Keenan Allen, for instance, has 84 speed in this game. He's dominant in the slot. That's the same speed as uh, as, as some really good receivers. Same thing with, uh, you know, Eric Baldwin's been very good when he's got a chance in the slot. His speed, 85. So for some of these kids, if they even just have decent speed, especially some of these kids like 6'7", 236, 6'5", 234, if they can use their speed uh, or use their size to block well, I'd be happy to line them up at wide receiver. Just convert them to wide receiver right away. Have that be them, even if their hands aren't very good. We can work on their hands. Just run blocking Rodney Romero F. Get out of my face. Jesus, is it Jesus or Jesus? I don't know. Vicioso, how is your run blocking, buddy? It's an F. Get out of my face. 6'7", 247. Get out of my face. Scott Noblin out of VMI. I don't know VMI. 6'4", 254. Probably the least wide receiver type body on the list. He's, he's an F as well. Javier Mara, Maramarosa, 6'7", 236. Run blocking is a D. Not very good. How about Tanner Fasha, 6'5", 234. That looks like a receiver. That could be a receiver's body, actually. Run blocking is an F. Get out of my face. Last guy, Tyler Krenke, 6'5", 244. Could be a receiver's body again. Run blocking is a D. Not very good. What about Dominic Morellis, 6'4", 246. I don't like the fact that this kid's a little older already, especially if we're going to have him try to convert positions. And yeah, you know what? By this point with Melvin Millard, fifth round pick, not worth it. So I don't think that any of these tight end projects are going to pan out. Let's let's check back here. We have two guys who are, you know, 6'7", 236. Maybe Javier Mera Marosa would be worth bringing along as a wide receiver. Um, he's not slated to be drafted at all, so he could be somebody we could pick up as a free agent maybe. His acceleration's a D. Uh, I don't know if you can be a wide receiver with an acceleration rating of a D. I don't want to check his his speed because it costs way too much. Let's check his catching and track. Yeah, it's a D. He's not worth it. Not worth it. We're going to have to actually do this the old-fashioned way and actually pick a wide receiver to play wide receiver. That sucks. God damn it. It's okay. It's okay. Run blocking. We go back to our wide receivers. There, there are no magical wide receivers who are going to do a great job of, of, of run blocking. There are a couple guys way late who might be able to do some of it. Aside from that, though, we're going to have to, again, do this the old-fashioned way. We've already checked out Tyshawn Murphy. What about Perry Timbers? What was your run blocking again? F, no. On to the next one. D, 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 F, C. Double C here. I like Juwan Blissett because he's bigger out of Simon Fraser. Is he even scheduled to be drafted? Yes, late seventh round. Let's see how what your other things look like. Catching, D. Catching and traffic, C. Both awful. Route running is a D. Release is a C. Awareness, C. Injury, C. Oh, buddy, you're killing me. Stamina, C. Yeah, I don't know if this guy is draftable. Too many holes. It's frustrating, man. So hard to find a wide receiver who can block. Tough. Anyways... I think that just about wraps it up for today. Milestone goal results. Okay, thank you. Advance week. Now, this is hugely important. If the if the Cleveland Browns lost this past week, I do not know who the Cleveland Browns played, but we will need to check their game. There they go. They, they, they were hosting the Rams, as we saw at the bottom of the screen. If the Browns lose, that means that we have the huge inside track. All we have to do is win this next week or hope the Browns lose, and we get first place in the AFC for the second straight year. Winning the conference. Um, our game this week will be against the Dolphins. I know that because we haven't played them twice this season. Uh, While well, we've played the Patriots twice, we've already played the Jets twice. We've only played the Dolphins once. So we will have a date with them probably on the road. I think we played them at home the first time around. First things first, though, we go back to the standings page. Um, I'd also like to update the stats for you guys going into the last game. Um, 
and checking that out. So 12 and, thir- uh, 12 and 3, you can see the Bills have clinched the AFC East. Jets fall the 10 and 5. And oh, beauty. Oh, beauty, beauty, heavy duty. Love it. Love it. Bills 12 and 3, top team in the AFC. All we need to do this week is beat up on the Dolphins. And as you can see here, Dolphins 7 and 8 on the season. Not exactly world burners. So you can see the full stats here. Actually, you know, let's let's quickly just go to the full stats for the AFC and the NFC. Well, let's go by division. AFC North, Browns dominated the whole season. Nobody else is making the playoffs. AFC South, Texans and Titans battling this one out to see who can win the division. Aside from that, Colts and Jags, mediocre, not going to make it. AFC East, we know the story here. AFC West, Chiefs have clinched a playoff berth. The Broncos are fighting for their lives to try and get in the wild card. Chargers and, Bur- and Raiders not going to happen. NFC North, Bill uh, Bears, Packers, and Vikings. All mediocre, could all take it. Uh, Lions, meanwhile, are out of it. NFC South, Saints going to make it. Panthers are going to take the wild card spot. Bucks, who knows? Maybe they could even make the wild card as well. Falcons are out of it. NFC East, Eagles in, everyone else out. NFC West, 49ers in, everyone else out. And those are the standings, folks. Bills tied for the lead league in wins with the Eagles and the 49ers. That is that. Let's quickly get over to the stats. Uh, we will update those. You know, let's let's wait on that. We'll do the stats when the season's done. In the meantime, we will await our game with the Dolphins as we enter practice. Um, also, as an update, just before recording this video, I double-checked on the status of Basman Hooker. Here's the situation with Basman Hooker. With a broken foot, Basman Hooker is going to be out until Super Bowl weekend. That is, if we were lucky enough to make it to the Super Bowl, Basman Hooker would be back to play in it. He would be back. He would be healthy. He'd be ready to go. If we do not make it to the Super Bowl, he's done. He's not going to be available for five more weeks. He's going to miss this week. He's going to miss next week when we get a bye week, first week of the playoffs. He's going to miss the week after that when we play a divisional game. If we win that one, he's going to miss the following week of the conference game. He'll even miss the bye week of practice. The time he'll come back is right before the Super Bowl. Right before the Super Bowl when we practice, he'll get one practice in, and then he's back in the game. That will be Basman Hooker's situation. Um, Just a rough injury to come up at a rough time, and he's out for more than a month. So that is the situation with him. Hopefully we will see him back because that will mean we're in the Super Bowl and also that we'll get him back as one of our best weapons. In the meantime, though, let's go ahead. Uh, let's get Franklin and Williams some time in practice. Darren Sproles, I think, will be our top guy uh, from here on out. Though we're going to do it like we did last game where, where, where uh, Hooker and uh, Franklin, a nice move there up to the 27-yard line, third and three upcoming. Uh, I think I'd like to do it just like we did with the Jets last game on Friday. We split the the carries really well uh, between Hooker, uh, pardon me, between Sproles and and Williams. I think they both had double digit carries. Um, I'd like to to maybe give Sproles, you know, for example, if Sproles gets twelve, then let's get Williams eight. So it's not even like a you know a top back and then a second back. It's kind of like one A and one B, if that makes any sense. Um, just spread the carries relatively evenly. And just use them for their strength. So let's get Williams running between the tackles. We'll get Sproles running out inside the tackles, and and also get him in a situation where he's able to run it, uh, or, or get you know uh, make catches out of the backfield, screens, uh, uh, wheel routes, that kind of thing. So that that will be the plan. Basically, doing the exact same thing we were doing with Hooker, only with uh, Darren Sproles taking his spot. Basically, that's what we're looking at. Uh, in the meantime. We are practicing, of course. We're driving the field right now against the Flippity Flops. And Deshaun Jackson does a nice job working his way back to the ball. Tackled to the 50-yard line. Also for tomorrow, our game against the Dolphins, it is obviously a must-win because winning that game will earn us the right to play at home throughout the playoffs with the number one spot in the AFC. Uh, however, um, if we are able to at any point uh, sit some of our star players, so you know if we go up by two touchdowns early, I'm pulling Aaron Rodgers, and I'm pulling um, Doug Baldwin, and, or pardon me, Eric Baldwin, and I'm pulling, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, I'm pulling Vontae Davis. You know, I'm, I'm going to try and get our best guys out as fast as possible. Um, I'll pull Deshaun Jackson. Um, I will pull uh, probably Michael Roos, 
and some of our other offensive linemen just make sure that they are rested and ready to go for the playoffs and not risk you know one of them you know tearing up a knee and having them out for the the rest of the season absolutely guaranteed just don't want to risk that it's needless it's stupid for a game that means nothing um though obviously winning it would be nice we can't risk the health of our guys and meanwhile as i'm saying that we the drive fizzles out here against the flippity flops nothing doing sam martin in to punt this ball away nice coffin corner beautiful coffin corner that one goes out at the seven yard line 208 left in the practice scenario flippity flops take it over at their own seven three receiver set up coming for the flippity flops we'll bring sanford back in the nickel tight end in motion from left to right flippity flops drop back to pass quarterback has all day to throw it on the double move wide receiver takes it two minute warning here practice scenario tied at seven nickel back in again silver shoot pinch we'll get try and get some pressure this time around on the defensive side halfback and tight end flanking the quarterback on both sides in shotgun over the middle and that one's knocked away by Dominic Rogers Camardi I don't even think that one uh, was one Dominic Rogers Camardi saw coming but he did knock it away second down and 10 yards now 158 left in the practice scenario 23 yard line of the flippity flops is where we find ourselves tight end and halfback flanking again two wide receivers to the right hand side and over the middle again, Kirkpatrick in coverage. Nice job. Incomplete. 155 left. Third and 10. Another three wide receiver set upcoming. We have not had success sending pressure. I'm still going to send some, though. This time we'll see uh, Kirkpatrick and Bostic head in. Hopefully one of them gets some pressure on this flippity flops quarterback. He steps back to throw. He throws a big lob pass up for number 82, who brings it down. I think that was Jamarcus Sanford in coverage, beaten on the out for a gain of 16. Hate it when that happens. Sucks getting a team in a third and long just to cough it up on the next play. Sucks, sucks, sucks. Same uh, flanking uh, tight end uh, halfback set. This time it is complete again to number 82, tackled by Vontae Davis. Second and one coming up. 48-yard line is where the flippy flops find themselves. This time, one of their wide receivers lines up at the tight end spot, and he's going over the middle for the tight end, tackled by Jason Worles at the 36-yard line. Flippity Flops driving smoothly now. Here we'll go zone coverage. Double tight ends in the game. John Bostic will be our user player here. And they are running it off the right-hand side. Freeman makes the tackle. Nice job on that rare 3-4 set. Freeman, we typically stay away from that spot. This time we, we go ahead with the 3-4, and it pays off. Nice job on the run. Sanford, our user player, again. Double tight end, again. Likely a run. If it is, we'll have to call a timeout after this one. And it is a run off the right side. Sanford, Durant, Dur neither of them can make the tackle. Diving, Thaddeus Gibson can make the tackle. Unfortunately for us, the flippity flops call a timeout on first and 10. Defense has just had no answers. We've had the flippy flops in third and long on this drive, but just moving it mechanically now. The flippity flops in shotgun again, two receivers to the right-hand side. They're running it off the left-hand side. Running back initially lights up, who looks to be Drake Kirkpatrick, finally taken down for just a gain of one. That's nice. We'll call a timeout here with 41 seconds left in the practice scenario. Stopping the clock at 41 seconds. Second and nine here for the flippity flops. Three running backs in. Tight end, fullback, halfback in the pistol set. Running backs are running it back to the left hand side. He's tackled. And that will likely, with no timeout being called by the flippity flops, set up their chance for a field goal. Hopefully, they kick it with enough time left that we get some type of possession with the ball, but it's not likely. Likely set here to lose our our fourth out of last five practice scenarios, which is an awful record. We had a great streak in the middle of the season where I think we won four or five straight. Right now, though, we've lost four of our last five, which sucks, costing us 
4,000 points in development over that stretch. Hugely important to win those, uh, win these practice sessions, and we don't today. So there we go. Last practice of the regular season lost by us. If anyone's been keeping track of all of our stats this season against the drops, by the way, in terms of wins and losses, feel free to share those. Uh, but that is the rest. That is the video for today. Thank you so much for joining me on Cereal Monday. Hope you're enjoying your cereal or whatever it is you choose to eat on Cereal Mondays, whether it's Pork Chop Monday or Chinese Food Monday or I don't care. Whatever it is, enjoy it. We'll see you tomorrow for our last regular season game. Until then, I'm Tuxedo T-Shirt, and I'm out.